First of all, I have to say um, good morning or good day. Depends on when you're watching this. And it occurred to me, did you know that it takes, apparently it takes fewer muscles to smile than it does to frown? I don't know why, because frowning can seem like everything is relaxed. <laughs> and as a senior, a lot of things are relaxing. Neck. I actually have a waistline now. I used to have a, like a chunky body <laughs> in the midsection. And now I actually have a bit of an hourglass going on because a lot of the stuff that was in my waist sort of zipped down onto my hips area. And now I have a, never mind, I won't tell you what I have, a human apron. Uh, all right, I told you. Uh, if you have one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry. It may come with age. I'm not sure. <laughs> certainly do for me. Right, so I'm Sue Johnston. I'm a retired counselor. I'm a mom and a wife, more wife than mom, just because the husband's always home. <laughs> so that role is always on call, um, but I like it, okay? Uh, anyway, so, and welcome to my channel and um, thanks for dropping by and I hope you stick around and maybe come by again. Tell your friends about it. Do something. I'm trying to to build an audience here, okay? <laughs> so you can help me do that. Uh, what am I gonna share today? Well, there is what I call my knitting bag, um, you know, whatever project I'm working on. And I'm actually working on, <laughs> uh, believe it or not, one, two, three, four things. Uh, I have some mittens uh which i'm going to do a pattern on like um what do they call that when you, you use a different wool i forget anyways <laughs> that's what happens also when you're senior that part of your brain drops <laughs> dear today is like senior drop day um, anyway so i'm going to share what i'm knitting and also i'm going to talk about and share a bit of video um, on a picnic that my husband and I had. Um, so I'm going to talk about taking an adverse circumstance and turning it into something positive for yourself. And it can be a deliberate action that we choose. And, you know, that that's something that uh, an attitude that you can take on. Or sometimes it just happens. And I think a lot of times... We're waiting for things to just happen, to just turn around on their own. And sometimes a little bit of effort on our part in terms of attitude and being creative uh, can help you turn an adverse situation or loss or whatever, turn it around for something good. So I will be sharing that as well. See if I can illustrate this in sort of a backward way instead of having a camera behind me to show you exactly what I'm seeing. I think you can still see the pattern idea and understand where I'm going with this. So I'm working on the midnight hour. It's a drops pattern. It's a free pattern. I'm working on two versions of it, two different pieces of wool. This is leftover wool, so I thought, well, why not? And the difficulty is getting all the little holes lined up. <clears throat> if you look at it, there's an extra hole over here. So there's three, and there should be just one on each side of the midline. So the pattern calls for uh, knit one and yarn over, and you get this little eyelet effect in the very beginning row which you'll pick up later and put a certain border on. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> <clears throat> and um, so I'm, I'm working on these and get all my wool tangled up. The, um, it's actually easier what I'm getting at here <clears throat> in terms of being able to, able to accomplish this is, <clears throat> I should stop here and clear my throat. Hold on. Okay, I think that's better. Yeah. Um, what I'm getting at here is that you you knit one, the pattern says knit one, yarn forward, 
knit across and so that creates a little eyelid effect on the end. I'm not doing it in this one. Um, <laughs> see, I should give up today. <laughs> Anyways, um, <clears throat> when you get to that center piece, that center row of eyelets, sometimes uh, it's hard to know how to keep the eyelets in order so that you get your eyelet. Um, so what am I trying to say? Knit one yarn forward, knit across, then you get to the center piece here. And how do you know when to do the yarn forward, knit one yarn forward, and then continue on? Well, when I was working on this, actually there was this lady who, she had this idea that you put yarn pieces of yarn in there before and after your center yarn, your center stitch. Okay, so that's the center stitch. This is not very even, but so, but it's always about finding that center stitch, this one here. So I did that for a green shawl that I made. It's just sort of a neck shawl. There's a few mistakes on this, but I'm just going to point out one in particular, talking about that center column. See how I messed up here? And it worked pretty good, except that I found that the little strings in that were always sort of getting in the way. And so then I came up with the idea, like a lot of people would, I guess, I just put a little stitch marker in that center row. Then I had to keep moving, moving, moving the stitch marker. So that was a bit annoying. But for some reason this morning, I picked this all up and I said, well, I wonder if. And you can kind of see it a little bit easier with this particular wool. What I wanted to do was train myself so that I could see the stitch when it's coming up. So I'm not using any wool and wool piece markers or any stitch markers at all. I just want to be able to knit and realize, okay, I'm coming to the centerpiece. How do I recognize that stitch? So right now, that's not it. The next one, take a look at my work. No, that's not it yet. Knit the next one. Now I can kind of see a row of eyelets here. Let me just hold that up. And this is actually my center stitch. Wait now. No, it's not. <laughs> one more. See, I'm still training myself to see it. There you go. Now the row of eyelets is right there. And this is my center stitch. And you kind of see the center stitch falls into the row of these stitches. So you knit, oops, yarn forward, knit that one, yarn forward, and then just continue knitting right on to the end. And uh, it will work out. <laughs> So, um, just if I can do that on this one, turn my work around. I'm actually on the, yes, I'm on the make, make, I call it make a, make a row. <laughs> this is the making row. And then return is just a straight pearl. Uh, so training myself to recognize where the eyelet is. Not yet. Of course, now I got the little thread in there, so that tells you. But see how the row is there? So that's when you do, whoop, you knit one more. There you go, there's your row of eyelets. And then yarn forward. I'm gonna take this off. A slight interjection here. I've been saying yarn forward. And actually when I mean the, the actual correct turn is yarn over. You'll see that in, Knitting instructions, Y-O, yarn over. So when I have been saying in this video, yarn forward, that's what I mean. Yarn, just yarn over. And then you knit the next stitch. <laughs> I don't want to use them. I just want to be able to recognize that center stitch when I get to it. And that is the center stitch that goes down. So knit one, yarn forward. Just take that guy off and then knit all the way down. 
So it's the yarn forward that creates the little eyelet. And you just knit your way across. I like this particular pattern. Um, I'll show a picture of the first one that I made and I had a lot of difficulty trying to get that center stitch all lined up. lot of difficulty trying to get that center stitch all lined up. The eyelet effect that goes down through. Um, but now I've, I've got it down to a science because I've been able to recognize when that yarn forward, knit yarn forward section comes up. But this pattern is fun and nice and easy once you get the hang of it. Uh, it's, it's great um, evening knitting watching TV. I've been watching a lot of hockey with my husband and uh, baseball started. So watching that as well. It's the kind of thing where with a straight knit, you can gradually train yourself to be looking somewhere else, let's say at the TV or whatever, or talking to someone <laughs> like I do it with you now. And you can still knit away and hopefully not make a, pro a mistake. And Except for the only time you pay attention is when you get to that midsection. So you just, I call that mindless knitting. And you can train yourself. This is a lot about training. Train yourself to be able to knit without looking at your wool. And you do that by feeling where your wool is at. Don't have it too bunched up on the end, you know, not because you won't be able to feel it the same way. But being able to feel that um, stitch on the needle and to know the next one's coming up. And it, it's, um, again, it's something you train yourself to do. So there you go. I'll be back. Hold on. Now, the other project I have been working on is my tank top, which this is my third attempt. But I think also I've trained myself. I've got it down to a science and I already have some more wool and in my head I'm knitting away on the next tank top. But this is where I'm at right now. Let me see if I can do this, turn it up this way without losing any stitches. I'm knitting on the round circular needles. Now, oh, this is it. Of course it's not blocked, but the first time I knit it, I thought, because I'm using a different kind of wool than the girl calls for, or the pattern calls for, and I'm using a different size needles, my wool is actually a one, and she was using a three, so I've got a fingerling one, and I'm using one needle size up. And so the first two times, two attempts I did it, it was way too big. <laughs> so I'm actually using her large size and it's working out for me. I've tried it on and it works pretty good. So, and it'll be a lot nicer when it's blocked. So I'm, I'm getting there. I've got to measure it and find out where I'm at with that. Projects. One reason I'm working on the midnight hour shawl is because sometimes you want a project that's going to knit up a little bit faster. And this does knit up a little faster. Once you get over that middle section, how to keep that straight and in order. Uh, <clears throat> you want, because the, the, um, the tank top actually takes a long time to knit. It's like knitting a full sweater without the sleeves. And this, by the way, the tank top is merino and silk. It's 85 merino and 15% silk. And gosh, I'm hoping that uh, it's not going to be too warm. See, silk is a natural, both of them are natural products and they should help your body to breathe even if you're too warm. So whereas uh, an acrylic or um, some kind of synthetic fabric will actually 
draw on your skin and keep heat in. So uh, it's much nicer to wear natural products so your body can breathe. That's part of my old hippie heritage. <laughs> yeah, I know. My daughter used to describe me, hey, or introduce me as, hey, here's my mom. This is my mom, and she was a hippie. <laughs> like, okay, thanks a lot. I'm more than that, actually. See, I'm at my centerpiece now. There's my, my center row where I have to pay attention. There's my eyelids. Here's my center stitch. And so that means I need to do yarn forward, knit that center stitch, yarn forward again, and then knit all the way down to the end of my row. Anyway, I hope you try the pattern. It, it is nice. It's relaxing. <laughs> Okay, here we are. For the summer, we are going to be connoisseurs of parks that are nearby. We bought a season pass for the conservation parks, which gives us access to about 12 different other things. Um, and there are probably 10, I think I counted at once, 10 different parks that we can visit. So today, since it's gonna be sunny all day, light winds and 24 degrees. It's the first day of our very first picnic. So here's what we have. So I'm all about comfort. So first of all, <laughs> we're gonna have a picnic and uh, whenever I have to go to the washroom, being a senior, I have to go right away. So I'm taking my porta potty along with me. I've got a screen for, a pop-up screen that I can use for shade because the deck, the place that we're going to is going to need some shade. Um, that's our lunch in there. Uh, sun hat, of course, my knitting, a blanket. I've got a pillow in there. I got uh, some bathroom stuff in there and I have a book in there. So we will take a walk on the trail, have our lunch, N not necessarily in that order, but for me, a lot of the fun is setting everything up. So I'll keep you posted on that one. Being able to turn an adverse situation into something positive, something good for yourself, is um, it's a skill. It's you, you have to be creative. So let me tell you that as seniors, we downsized and we are renting the upper portion of a bungalow. And one of the key features of that was this beautiful side deck that we had. And we used it for probably about three years. We loved it. I used to put a lot of potted plants out there, really dress it up. And I think in the summertime, we practically lived out there. We had our coffee out there. We had our glass of wine out there, uh, conversations, books, you know. It was great. We even had visitors come out and barbecue, that sort of thing. Now, at a certain point, um, the people that lived downstairs were asked to leave their apartments because they were illegal. And the landlady kind of knew that when she bought the house and knew that one day she would have to make a change there. And sure enough, the fire department had come in and said, look, these guys can't be here. So she decided to renovate and make everything legal. So she created a nice apartment downstairs. And this senior couple that we know that are now our friends, they rent the hall downstairs. But in the process of all that, an inspector came by and said the deck was also illegal. It was built along property line. There was never a permit taken out on it, so it had to go down. And that's it. We lost our deck. We really, really mourned the loss of that deck. I mean, it's not like you can have a barbecue out on your front lawn. I suppose you could. You can't put a gazebo out on the front lawn. You can't have an awning for shade. I mean, it just, it just doesn't work. And I know we have our neighbors and we can use the backyard a little bit, but it's not really ours. So we missed having a deck. Well, what I discovered with this park plat pass in this particular video, we're going to Island Lake, which is in Orangeville. Uh, there are several decks that we can actually picnic on. And I'm going to, in the video, I'm taking you, well, Stanley's leading, but we're going down the path and we're going to sit at one of these decks and set it up as if, it's our deck. It shuts out onto the water. It's lovely. There's birds, there's nature. So I'm actually getting a little more 
than if we had that deck at our home. So we lost our deck, but bottom line is we just wanted some place where we could sit and relax and enjoy the sun, have some privacy, have some independence, and enjoy There's nature. all kinds of and adversity in life. Did. In fact, and you'll see I have a friend video. who says that in this world, in this life, you will have trouble. And some of the troubles are big and they're more difficult to get over. And other things are a little bit more trite, easier to manage. But they still affect us, like losing a deck. Or, like when we went to Ireland last summer, my husband's birthplace, the airline lost my luggage and it never arrived back. Fortunately, they did find it. But I didn't get it back until two weeks after we were home. So I spent my whole 10-day vacation in Ireland with one set of clothing that I had traveled in and I had to wash out every day or every other day. I didn't buy clothes right away because people kept saying and the airline kept saying, you will get your luggage. It will show up. It will be delivered to where you're staying. What's the address? But it never did. And by day three, I thought, well, I have to buy something. So I found a sweater. Day four, my niece was helping me shop. And it was funny because she was holding up various pieces of clothing saying, how about this? How about this? And honestly, I'm 68, but I looked at those pieces of clothing that she was holding up and I thought, oh my gosh, I know I'm older, but that's definitely grandma clothing. And that's not me. And it's not my style. So just because, like my daughter said, hey, you get to go shopping, doesn't mean that it was easy. And you didn't want to spend your whole vacation shopping. We were visiting with his brother and wife. And so, you know, you didn't want to be dragging them around in stores all the time. So day five, I finally found a store that had a lot of really lovely linen clothing. And out of that, I ended up buying three skirts that I absolutely love and I will be wearing a lot this summer. So my adverse situation, even though there was a bit of suffering involved while I was in Ireland, I didn't even have my proper shoes to walk around in, so that was a problem. Even though there's a, there a bit of suffering and eventually you get past that, um, I was compensated for the money I put out for clothing. But the neat thing is, and I always come back to this, I got three linen skirts I absolutely love. And I've not seen anything in Ontario or Canada, or even when we go over the border to the US, I've not seen anything like it since. So I'm very happy with that. So the thing is, this is the main principle. Sometimes we run up against very negative situations, adverse situations, circumstances. Sometimes you can be very creative and figuring out what the bottom line is. What is it that I really need here? Do I need a deck with privacy and to be in nature? Is that my goal? Because maybe some other way I can find it, which I did. And well, the clothing and losing his luggage, right? You know, I have this statement where I say, you know, we mine for the gems in the rubble. So when you're in a negative set of circumstances. Sometimes it's like a fire has raised through your dwelling, your belongings, and now you have nothing left. But fire will not melt gems, precious gems and gold, unless it's really, really bad fire. Uh, but generally it's not. So you can actually dig through the rubble and find your jewelry again. Talk to a fire department. They'll probably be able to confirm this. But the point is, when something raises through your life, once the embers have cooled off, there should be a way to creatively mine for the gems in those embers, in the ash. So you find a way to creatively bring some kind of good out of the situation for yourself. So that's my hope for you. I hope that when you're in a negative situation, and you're not going to think about this when you're in it, but when the bit of time passes and you can look back, then hopefully you can find some kind of good that has come out of it. It might be a stretching of character. It might be a new quality that you've gained. It might be finding somebody else's deck that you can enjoy or getting some clothing that you wouldn't have got otherwise.
if the bad things hadn't happened.